Hello YouTube, this is Tula. Today I would like to show you my process of drawing a flower. This is an imaginary flower and I'll be um, pencil sketching then inking my outlines and then using watercolors to add color to it. I'm starting with a very light and loose sketch just to see the petals and the way they they curve. I'm not looking at anything, I'm just imagining it all. I'm trying to give it a natural flow although it's not not at all realistic. Next I look at it and I try to find the defined shapes within the rough sketch. Trying to give it a very flowing feeling, which is what I was going for. And a lot of times I find it very helpful to create the main vein in the center of the petal or leaf, it doesn't matter. And that really helps me see and feel the, the flow and the curvature of the, of the petal or leaf. So I have the outline of the shape that I drew roughly before and defining this main vein really gives a feeling of the, the shape and the um, fold of this petal. I'm always moving the paper because then I can get um, to create the lines in a direction that is most comfortable for me and I find that my lines look more flowing and um, yeah, more flowing <laughs> will, will, will uh, suffice. I do that with pencil as well as with um, ink and also with brushes. Okay, now I'm adding some stamen. No, not yet. I don't know if you can hear the wind and the rain in the background. We're having fairly crazy weather for Israel. And it's very cold. Okay, now with these uh, veins, I'm further defining the, the curves and the um, directions of the leaves or petals, whatever you want to call them. And they will be very helpful for me later in determining how how each leaf curls. I keep them wavy and that helps them Again, the natural flowy feeling. Okay, now I'm adding some stamen. I 
and here I got a little confused with uh, which petal is in front and which is in the back and where I should place the stamen but since this is an imaginary flower it doesn't really matter <laughs> it will still work probably I'm trying to get them to come out of the same point, the center of the flower. Okay, now um, this is my test sheet and I'm testing um, two inks that I consider using for the outlines. The one I'm coloring right now is the Noodler's Lorraine Mauve ink. And the other one is the uh, Platinum Carbon Ink. Lorraine Mauve, the Noodlers, is um, really deep purple. It's a beautiful color. Both these inks are waterproof. So you can see that my ink isn't running at all. This is, I'm already into my second bottle of the Platinum Carbon Ink. I really like this ink. It's, uh, I think the black is quite rich. It has a bit of a shine to it, which I really enjoy. And it feels like it sits a bit on top of the paper and doesn't immediately absorb into the fibers of the paper. It takes a bit of time to, to dry. It's not very fast drying, but I really enjoy it. So I'm doing this test to determine, first of all, to make sure that none of them, none of these inks are um, smudging when I add the water. And also to see the overall effect, whether I want a darker outline or a little lighter, excuse me. The wind kept opening the door, sorry. So I decided to go with Lorraine, Lorraine Mauve, the queen. And I'm using the browser, pum, blue pumpkin, sorry, blue pumpkin nib. I like to use it for drawing because it's not very scratchy. And so I can move my hand in all directions and not have it uh, bump into the texture of the paper. It can give me fairly fine lines and also thicker ones, though I'm not pressing here. And I'm just following the lines that I already made. I'm not sticking to them exactly. I'm more concerned with getting a nice fluid movement. The purple looks really dark and I I think purple is a great uh color to use with all other colors. <laughs> I really enjoy it. Now I'm defining the stamen so I know well, so I can place the petal behind them. I got a bit confused here about which lines belong to which petal. <laughs> Maybe now is a good time to mention that the paper I'm working on is uh, Lana Quarelle by Lana of France. This is the hot breast. 
I have both the hot and the cold pressed. It wasn't cheap to, to ship them to Israel, but I wholeheartedly recommend this uh, paper, both of them. They're wonderful, wonderful papers. I really enjoy them. They are 100% cotton. Even though I'm not using all of my pencil lines, they still give me direction. Okay, now we are back to testing. I knew I wanted to use ochre, pink and uh, green. I have an olive green shade that's a little more yellowish that I really enjoy. I already tried a few pinks. It, it's not Queen Rose like it says, it's uh, Rose Madder Lake, which is the color I used eventually. And I also tried the Carmine. And my ochre is, um, it's a yellow ochre by Winsor Newton that is lovely, I think. But I added some um, Quinacridone gold to it. And I think that gives it a very rich kind of uh, look. And when I test out colors, I let them dry as well. Because a lot of times colors look bright when they're wet and they dry very muted. So in my tests, I make sure how they look when they're dry to get the effect I want. I'm wetting the petal I'm going to color and wetting the paper first allows the colors to flow really nicely one into the other although I'm very impatient I wish I had a bit more patience and I think I would get better results then Okay, so this is the Rose Mother Lake. And the brush I'm using here is um, Princeton Neptune number six, I think. I think it's the number six. It's a synthetic imitation squirrel hair. It's got a really nice point. I have a softer synthetic squirrel brushes but it's really nice I really enjoyed using it oh, I love watching paint dry <laughs> I want to try to uh, explain something. I hope I can convey what I mean. When, when you're working wet on wet and you um, have one color on the brush and one color already on the paper, let's say I already have the pink and I want to infuse some uh, ochre into it, there's a difference in the um, movement you're making, the direction you're going in. If I go with the ochre from um, the ochre area into the pink, when I release the brush, when I lift it, I get a little bloom of residue paint that is left there 
and if I go the other way, if I go from the pink to the ochre, to the color I have on my brush, then you you get a finer point in the pink area. You'll see it soon, I hope. But I think it's something that's worth worth considering when you're adding paint. You see all these tiny blooms that are left when I lift up my brush? If you don't want as much color, then it's better to go the other way, to go from to go into the area of the color you have on the brush. Yes. I hope that's understandable. Also, since I'm I want some of my color to remain pure, I don't always start um right at the other color. Oh, I think I'm just confusing you. How can I explain this? Okay, here I didn't want to bloom with the green, so I started in the ochre, going down into the green area. And when I go the other way, you can see that I'm leaving more residue of uh, tiny blooms. Okay, the paper is already wet here. Now when I add the, um, the ochre, I hope I did it in this petal, since I want to get some of the pure ochre mix, I put it in an area where I don't have the pink, so that I have bits of pure color, and only then I mix it into the to the pink. Since this is a very soft-haired brush, I'm not moving a lot of the paint I already have, so I'm able to just caress it. <laughs> If you haven't tried working on cotton paper, I highly recommend it. I um I didn't try it for the longest time because it's really expensive and I thought I'm just a beginner, I shouldn't use such a expensive paper for works that aren't you know masterpieces. But actually, 
cotton paper is the nicest paper you can um, you can have. It's so forgiving because it holds the the moisture a lot longer than cellulose paper, the regular watercolor paper, and so you have a lot more time to work and to fix colors or move or change it. So it's um it's a sort of paradox because it's much more beginner friendly and yet I think beginners hardly use it. Anyway, if you haven't, I highly recommend trying pretty much any cotton paper I think. Any cotton watercolor paper will give you this experience of what it's like. Okay, time for more tests. I want to add um, brush lines to my petals. So I'm trying three different tiny brushes. This is the Aqua Elite. It's a number one round. Next we have the Neptune, a uh, number two round. Sometimes I find that um, larger brushes have a better point. <laughs> Depends on the brush, I guess. So these lines are a little too inconsistent and too thick for me. And the third one is the um, Heritage round number one. This is more stiffer than the other two brushes. It's uh, All of them are from uh, Princeton. And they're all synthetics. And this one I had for a longer time than the other two, and I really enjoy it. The heritage. So I decided to go with the heritage. Now, I intentionally, intentionally chose this uh, back petal to start with because when I'm starting, I'm still finding my way and deciding what I'm doing. And I don't want to start with the most prominent areas of my drawing, painting. I rather um, start in something that even if I make changes later, will not be as obvious and as it won't jump at you. And this is actually what happened here. I started with this li these lines. And first of all, I think the color I used is a little too dark. I should have used a lighter, more watery mix that will blend better with uh, the color I have underneath. And also, here I'm creating lines that flow from one side of the petal to, to the vein. And later I changed it, or you'll see in a minute. So it's very lucky that I started with a back petal and not a prominent one. I have a cat visitor here. Okay, you can see in the second petal that I started that my mix was too watery and so my line weren't very defined and thin.
Okay, so now you can see the change. I'm not um, creating the lines to go from the edge to the center vein, but rather I'm stopping at some point and letting them fade out because I have different colors here and I wanted to use the pink tones on the outside and the ochre and greens from the center vein going outwards to the edge of the petal. And I'm describing all of these issues to you, but they're not very noticeable when you look at the, the painting as a whole. And when I'm creating these lines, I'm mostly following the shape I already defined with the veins in the ink lines. Okay, so now I have the color from the center outwards and the lines will meet in the middle somewhere. And you can see that as I get into the flow, I get better, better thickness of lines. Now I think it's um, going to stop filming soon. I didn't, camera stopped and I didn't realize I was so absorbed in, in these lines. <laughs> Really enjoy drawing this. And this is the finished piece. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope the uh, understanding my process helps you with yours. And I have, as always, the list of the materials I used in the description. I would love to hear anything you have to say in the comments. And if you liked it, please uh, give it a like and consider subscribing to my channel as well. Thank you so much. It's cold here, so I'm wishing you a warm and cozy day. Bye-bye.